State, but Northwestern State's not intimidated, David. They're, they're here for a reason. Uh, they've got a lot of toughness as well. DeMarcus Sharp scored 40 in the last meeting between these two teams in Corpus Christi, but the Demons still lost to the eventual regular season champs in the Islanders under two weeks ago. Tip goes to Corpus, and we're underway, and Terion Murdick brings the ball down. That's a good sign for Corpus. He binged up his left knee yesterday, and you see that he's wearing his left brace around his knee as we get things started here this afternoon. Jalen Jackson drives on Sharp. Rebound into the hands of Jalen Hampton for the Demons. Now, good start defensively. That's a great possession to open the game. In addition to Sharp and Emmanuel, Jamonte Black, 118 three-pointers made this season. That is fourth in the nation. Isaac Haney for three. Yes. And the Demons on the board first. Uh, he's feeling it. He, he's, you know, letting everybody know that his, his, his fingers are on fire. But, you know, you play with DeMarcus Sharp, David. If you can get open, he'll find you. He's got the knack. His head is up at all times, but he finds his teammate. And what a, what a, what a great teammate to find in Haney. Uh, deadly from outside. Sharp nine assists yesterday in addition to those 31 points. Just saw the starting five for the Islanders a moment ago. We mentioned their three leading scorers in the open, but DeLazarus Keys, his first double-double of the season yesterday, 18 points, 10 rebounds. Isaac Mishila misfires, and Hampton his second rebound. That was another good possession by Northwestern State. you got to keep in mind, Corpus Christi really likes to attack the glass. There's nobody that gets the free-throw line in this conference more than them. One of the tops in the country. Sharp leading scorer in the Southland. Second best assist man in the Southland as well. Fades over Murdix and gets fouled. Well, that's the step back that we're talking about, David. He can get that shot. The one thing you don't want to do is foul. You want to challenge up. But my goodness, uh, that, that he's just, he gets a shot. Corey Gibson's done a great job, David. He's just, in a, you know, really a, a young, up-and-coming coach, but he demands respect from his players, and he gives his players respect as well. Just his first year in Natchitoches, turning around a program that had not been close to the top of the league in recent years. He coached three Missouri Valley Newcomer of the Years at Missouri State as an assistant. And as he moved down to Natchitoches, brought to Marcus Sharp, Isaac Haney, and Jamonte Black with him from Missouri State. Great young man who we talked to yesterday, played point guard for an Austin P team that won back-to-back -back Ohio Valley Championships 20 years ago. And he played for Dave Luce as well, a, a longtime successful coach, somebody I've had the pleasure of coaching against and known for many years. Two misses at the line for Sharp. Emmanuel guards Murdix. Jackson gets by Sharp, lays it in, Corpus on the board. And that's what they do, David. They attack the glass, they get to the rim. They've got some shooters as well, but they really prefer to get the ball on the block in post-ups and also by penetration out the drive. Jalen Jackson looking for his third NCAA tournament appearance. Made it with North Texas two years ago. North Texas upset Purdue in the tournament. When his head coach Steve Lutz was an assistant under Matt Painter. Sharp on the board. And Murdix. Goes down. Now, we mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, and he is in pain. He banged up that left knee under their head coach, Steve Lutz, as they see their leading point guard have to be helped off. Well, it, it, it can be, you know, it's an adverse thing that happens, but sometimes can inspire David. You've got to step up. You know, it's interesting. You see now, uh, you see Northwestern State in a zone. They're, 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 they're playing. Now they're going back to man. They started out in the zone. Now they're going back and playing position defense. So Lazarus keys for three off the mark. Just saw Steve Lutz a moment ago, took over a Corpus Christi program that two seasons ago won five games, had an 18-game turnaround, and won the Southland Tournament title one year ago. Islanders looking for their first back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances ever. And he's done a phenomenal job, David. Sharp fades over Jackson this time. Hampton, the offensive rebound. Black for three, yes! Mentioned a moment ago, fourth in the nation in threes, now with 119 on the season. 
Tennyson the layup to answer. Well, guess what? Don't celebrate if you're Northwestern State because the Islanders know how to put points on the board. 80 points a game, 80 plus. They're one of the top, obviously, in the country in the top 20s in scoring. Number 18 presently. And first in the Southland in scoring, also scoring margin and rebounding margin. Sharp got it poked away. Saved by Black, who wants another three and gets it. Well, David, they didn't have a very long time to warm up before the game, but looks like they don't need any. 11 to 4, the two seeds on top. Corpus swept the regular season series. Jackson for three. Hot start for Northwestern State. Hampton's fourth rebound. Corpus's spiritual leader, Terry on Murdix, helped off the floor a couple of minutes ago. The Islanders hang in there against Demarcus Sharp and the Demons. Sharp leading score on the league. Pulls up for the baseline. Jackson on the run. Slam dunk on the follow for Fryer, who just came in for Murdix a minute ago. Now they're relentless, David. They crash the glass. They're aggressive. You know, it's a little bit of a slow start for Corpus, but they've been down before. They, they just keep coming at you, there's no doubt. An experienced team. They brought back most of the members of that tournament championship team who had the biggest impact. Mishila called for the foul. We talked so much about DeMarcus Sharp that it's Jamonte Black leading the way so far for Northwestern State. On the 1983 Southland Player of the Year when Louisiana Tech was a Southland member, averaged almost a double-double, and of course from there, 18 seasons, his first 18 seasons in the NBA with the Utah Jazz. No surprise, Joe Dumars' number retired and this court no, is named after court, Joe. Court named after Joe Dumars. I might have helped that coach against Joe. <laughs> Sharp the wild shot. Yeah, when you were at Siena Heights, you played McNeese in an exhibition game here. No, we played him in a real game and we lost okay. in overtime. But, you know, I told the story a million times. We had to go triangle two, two on Dumars. You actually played two on Dumars yeah, and absolutely. four on three with everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. He was that good, David. <laughs> Trust me. We joked, Dumars and I have joked about it since. He actually said we should have won the game. But, you know, he's a humble guy and uh, even better guy than he was a player. Yeah, taking the overtime, surprise other teams didn't do it. New Sheila, how important is it for him to get going with Murdix out, but also coming off a struggle yesterday? Well, he struggles, but you know, even though he struggled in points, David, he never struggles in rebounds or effort. Uh, he's just a workmanlike player. You, you know, he, he's just not going to stay down for long. He's going to be able to get to the foul line, do things to help your team. New Sheila averaging 15 points a game, held a five yesterday in the win over McNeese. Fryer couldn't stay in front of Sharp the whole time, but he missed fires. Emmanuel comes away with a rebound, and he's able to save it to Sharp. Now, that's an unbelievable, David. Sharp fades. Emmanuel chases it down again. David, that's two save possessions by Hans. You know, Hansel, Hansel Emmanuel just goes up and gives his team two free possessions. What hustle? We can't stress to you enough. It's plays like that that's allowed him to earn the respect of his team and now start it. Look what it leads to. Two of the possession. You give DeMarcus Sharp two opportunities, two extra possessions, he'll burn you. Emmanuel didn't arrive at Northwestern State until late August and then missed part of the season due to a concussion. So it's taken some time for him to develop and reach this point. Jackson on the drive draws the foul. Yeah, and he's only a freshman. I mean, just incredible. But David, he keeps the ball alive, and he's doing it again with one arm. You know, it's tough enough to rebound with two. And he goes up there, keeps the ball alive, rips it out with one arm, comes up, and he does it twice in a row, and he gets his teammate, DeMarcus Sharp, an opportunity to get a second shot. But just, I mean, it's amazing. He, and he's able to play, knows how to play, knows the game. Emmanuel's in the U.S. on what's called an 01A visa. According to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, it's given to individuals with extraordinary abilities or achievements. Well, and you know what? I, I, I mean this in a positive way, but this is not a token start. I said this yesterday. Uh, he's playing because he's earned it. He makes his team better. He's got a, a, a tough mindset. But, you know, he does the little things on the court, again, that won't show up on the stats. He'll get deflection. He'll get second ch chance points for you. Uh, really, really tough players. No question, State basketball. Emmanuel wears number 24. That number had been retired. But Vernon Wilson, who was a great for Northwestern State in their days in the 70s when they were an NAIA power, gave Hansel Emmanuel his blessing to wear it. 
Well, and I can see why. Nobody more deserving. 15-8, the Northwestern State lead, shooting 60% from the floor so far, and a perfect three of three from beyond the arc. Sharp, two more. Continuing his hunt tournament after his 31-point performance last night. A hard cover, David, just really hard one-on-one. -on -one. You need a second defender there. Corpus throws it away, turnover. You know, as a coach, you don't like to isolate too much, but you don't mind isolating Demarcus Sharp. He pays dividends for you. Well, let's check out the 2023 New York Life ACC Men's Basketball Tournament bracket. It's in Greensboro, North Carolina. Pitt survives Georgia Tech. Wake Forest rallies to beat Syracuse earlier today. And coming up after us, North Carolina, do they have to win the conference tournament to get into the big dance? They'll take on Boston College. A three-pointer to put North Western State up 12. It's by Haney. And Corpus calls timeout. All deep. Or his players. The clowns that he says they talk about winning off the court. Every player is required to spend at least 70 hours doing community service or charitable activities. And you see pictures of the demons doing that before the season began, even during the season. All totaled up, Ben Braun. Over a thousand hours of community service by the demons this year. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And you know, that's the message, David. There's always something, somebody and something greater than yourself. And, and that's what you want to give back to your, uh, as a message to your players. They may win the conference tournament crown, but Corey Gibson tells us we've already won the community service crown. Yeah. DeMarcus Sharp, eight points, two assists, once more, has it. Without their leading point guard, Terry on Murdix, who had to be helped off the floor in the early stages of this game. This Corpus needs a couple of buckets to calm things down, don't they? Well, they gotta, they got to find a way, David. They've got to solve DeMarcus Sharp. Number of Northwestern State fans here, two and a half hours away from Lake Charles is Natchitoches. Simeon Fryer up the good feed from Keys quiets them down. But you're going to see DeMarcus Sharp play at the pace he wants to play at. He's going to have the ball in his hands for good reasons, but he does uh, really is an unselfish player. He can score it, but he, he certainly can take over a game and assist. Haney from the corner. First miss from beyond the arc for Northwestern State after hitting their first four. And Jalen Hampton is called for going over the back. Ten points already for the player of the year in the league, DeMarcus Sharp. Now there's no point. He will be replaced by longtime assistant Adrian Autry, the school said in a statement. News that will reverberate throughout the college basketball world. We'll be talking about it at halftime and throughout the night. But now, back to you guys. Thank you, Michael. Ben Braun, you a longtime head coach yourself, over 600 wins in your career. Your thoughts on Jim Beheim retiring after 47 years? Well, David, I've known Jim uh, Beheim and his wife, Julie, for many years, and uh, it's great when you can walk off under your own terms. Not many coaches do that. You know, Coach K, Roy Williams, maybe Gene Cady, the great Al McGuire at a young age, but to be able to do that, walk away and, and, and you know, coach your own sons before you retire, mm -hmm. that's a treat, uh, and, and his career will you know, be is a memorable one, but happy for Jim that he can do it, uh, do it his way. All the best to Jim Beheim and his retirement continues the line of coaching legends. Demarcus Sharp starting to reach legendary status here at the tournament. He has 12, but of course you have Coach K, Jay Wright, a number of the greats have retired in the last couple yeah, of years. I didn't mention Jay Wright. My bad, Jay. If you're out there <laughs> listening, I'm going against you, so that's my bad. Roy Williams as well, of course. But they're, they, they're just not that long a list, trust me, uh, of those of, of coaches that can say they've done that. And, uh, and that's the tough part about coaching. It's a great profession, but you just don't, not many get to do it that way. But, you know, speaking of legends, and, and we're not going to put them in that status, status yet or category, but what DeMarcus Sharp has done early in this, in this game, the urgency, what he's done to get his team and give this team the lead has been remarkable. He just plays with such poise. He changes speeds. He never looks like he's flustered. Uh, you really feel good about coaching this young man or being his teammate. He gives exudes confidence. Yeah, 40 in the last meeting against Corpus. He's ahead of that pace right now with 12. Under 10 to shoot. Sharp wants it again. Fading again. Scoring again. David, I've coached a lot of great players, but this is one of the better performances I've seen, especially in a championship game. 26-10. Corpus swept the regular season series. Much different start 
here on the conference's biggest stage with an NCAA berth on the line. Well, normally you'd say go double him, but when you're a big assist guy like him, he'll make you pay. So that's just, it's not as easy as it looks. You've got to find a way just to get it out of his hands early and hope he doesn't get it back. Yeah, he's 7 for 11, but his teammates are 4 of 5 to your point. Shot clock winding down again. Sharp drives again. Pulls up. This time off the mark. Emmanuel got the tip, but Fryer picks up the rebound for the Islanders. Uh, if you're the Islanders, you've got to get on the board. You can't let this lead get away from you. They leave Fryer open. Made the all-tournament team last season. Needs a type of performance today. He's at six. Well, this is a championship team, David. They're not going to go away. They're not going to stop playing hard. Uh, they're used to winning, and, and, and they're going to make a run in this game. So if you're Northwestern State, you can't relax. You've got to keep the pressure on uh, a very competitive and successful Corpus Christi team. Demons got off to a great start last night against New Orleans, led by 17 late first half. But the privateers did come back to tie it before DeMarcus Sharp and the Demons survived. Fryer bumps Sharp down and picks up the foul. Uh, you can see, you know, how difficult it is if you're trying to prepare for him because, you know, he just finds ways uh, to beat you. I mean, he, he, he has a hesitation move. He gets to the rim. He's got great body control. Uh, but he'll get a much-deserved rest. I really think this is smart. Uh, Corey Gibson will give him a, a break right before the TV timeout. That, that couple minutes is huge. He hurt his leg last season while at Missouri State, had foot surgery in 2021. Corey Gibson said a lot of people thought he was damaged goods, but he was an assistant when DeMarcus Sharp played at Missouri State and knew of his potential, and he is showing that here in this conference tournament. Owen Deese drives, and it's four in a row now for the Islanders. Yeah, they're, David, they're not going away. They're a, a tremendous team. You know, they put points on the board. They can score on you. Their job, if you're the Islanders now, is just to slow down this Northwestern State team, make them work a little bit harder, make them get some tougher shots. And with, with, with DeMarcus Sharp out, that's an opportunity for them to make a run. Isaac Haney now plays the point with Sharp on the bench. Tough look. Hampton there. Lost it going up. And it's Corpus basketball. It's been the DeMarcus Sharp show so far. Top seed Corpus Christi looking to edge into this deficit. Over Texas tomorrow to make it. Coach Ben Braun, the top six seeds, all top five seeds in the NCAA tournament, according to Joe Lenard. David, how good is the big... 12 been this year phenomenal i've covered them uh, you know know the coach as well competed against them this is just a banner banner year and obviously the big 12 is going to be one of the nine at least nine multi-bid leagues but a tournament like this where everything is on the line you must win to make the ncaa tournament and most conferences are like this you coast at eastern michigan and rice most of those years those are one bid leagues then you coast at cal in the pac-12 mostly a multi-big league describe the difference in pressure in a tournament like this one well it's unbelievable the pressure you have david that's a great play right there from tough and one opportunity but you really really uh you know you, you do have pressure you can you can slice it any way you want when you win your league championship and we won three at, at eastern michigan we had to go back out and win the championship to go to the tournament the conference tournament championship that's a great look by the way uh again you you know you get demarcus sharp back in the game your your energy everything just your level goes back up but it, it, again if you're trying to if you're corpus christi you can't put pressure on yourself you've got to go out and do what you've done every day you you don't you don't put more pressure on your team, your your coaches. You just say, let's do what we've done all year long, and that's got to be good enough. Corpus head coach Steve Lutz was telling his team earlier this week, of course, they are the regular season champs, so if they can't come back today, they make the NIT, that it's still a great accomplishment for so much attention on the NCAA tournament. It can cover up regular season success. And Steve Lutz was telling his team, look, be proud of what you've done so far. But obviously, they want their name called on selection Sunday. Well, they and Sheila trying to do his best. They do, and I still believe they should have more teams in the tournament. I'll continue to say that. And don't know if we have enough time to go over why, but uh, a lot of reasons. There's a rare turnover by DeMarcus Sharp. How about a little momentum? 
now for the Islanders. Uh, but, David, you know, again, you, you concentrate, and Steve Lutz does a great job of this. What he's done to turn this program around, one of the best turnaround stories in the in the nation, uh, and he's done it quickly. A chance to win back-to-back -back championships. That just, I mean, go right back-to-back -back tournaments. That just hasn't happened in this conference. So, uh, but you just do what you do. You, your identity is who you are. You can't manufacture and change that. You've got to continue to do the things that have made you successful. Tough feed from Ashila, but tipped last by the Demons. And I think Corpus thinks it's Northwestern State ball, but Brent Duga says it'll remain Islanders' well, possession. This, and this may be overruled, however. This is a veteran crew, David. They're going to talk about it. You've got Brent Dugas, Kerry Sitton, and Ross Collins, and they're saying, come on back, everybody. Not so fast. <laughs> Let's take another look as Mishila. I'm not so sure that Greedy Williams touched that basketball. Well, and if he did, was the ball already out of bounds? So I don't know. And, but they're rewarding the ball here. They're saying, come on, put the, put the ball in play. It's going to be Islanders' ball. Huge play for them. Oh, huge break. Another chance to get it to within single figures. Tennyson does it right off the inbounds. Well, now you see even more of a huge break. They turn it into a basket. How about the Islanders, David? They were down big, and they're climbing back in single digits now. Uh, very important for them to maintain their focus. It was a 16-point deficit just over three and a half minutes ago. Now down to nine. Deese tipped it away. Tennyson gives it to these. He's rewarded with the flush. Timeout, Demons. Corpus right back in this one on a 12-3 run. Big time recovery. We'll discuss the retirement announced not long ago of Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. Also, post-game interviews plus a look ahead at tomorrow's quarterfinals. It's on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Leading assist man in the league, Terry on Murdoch's helped off the floor in the early stages. The Corpus Christi, they got down 16. What have they done to get back into this game, Ben Braun? Well, they have to get the ball back, too. They've turned it up defensively. They're really de de relying on their defensive presence. They're now getting stops. They're getting turnovers. And they're doing what they've done all year long. They're scoring in transition, and they're attacking the basket. Again, top 20 in the country in scoring. They can score, but defense has gotten them back in this game. DeMarcus Sharp was just called for his second foul. Looks like he will be taken out at the next whistle. Simeon Fryer for three. Second chance coming for Corpus. Deese left open. Yes! Well, David, I'll tell you one other thing they've done. They've taken the opportunity to regroup since Murdoch's went up, and they're inspired. I think they're using this as an inspiration. They're not feeling sorry for themselves. They're deciding we've got to go out. We get the best thing you can do to pay your teammate back is battle in his, on his behalf. Fryer stays in front of Sharp. He feeds Haney. Sharp connects. Now, you want to stop a run? Put the ball in his hands. He knows how to stop one. Six-point Northwestern State lead. Deese again. Redshirt freshman on this very experienced team. Back-to-back -back triples. David, how bad do these players want this game? They're stepping up their game. They know what's on the line. They want to play in an NCAA tournament, and they're saving nothing. Ten for Deese off the bench. Jamonte Black unable to respond. Ball out of bounds. <laughs> Corpus down at one point by 16, now just down three late in the first. You want to stop him, he has 16 points. He's got two fouls, so it'll be interesting to see how they finish the half. All right, let's get back there. David, Ben, we'll see you guys in half. Thank you, guys. To Tom Crane's point, points in the paint favoring Corpus 18-6. But DeMarcus Sharp remains on the floor with those two fouls under four to go in the first.
Well, that is a big factor, and you know those two guys, <laughs> his coaches in the studio, they they analyze well, and and, and that's to, to their point. You you do have to go out there and and find a way with Sharp now, and and see what can you do to stop him. I, you can slow him down. I don't think you're going to stop him. Bill Bonzel and Baba's pass is tipped away. Another turnover. Northwestern State's fourth since they were up 16. And Jalen Jackson gets to the rim. Deficit down to one. David, how do you stop a run? Well, you you, you got to focus on the defensive end. You don't stop a run by just nailing a bunch of shots. You slow down the team that's scoring, and you do it defensively. Zell and Baba. Chance for the Islanders to take the lead. Jackson, sharp the block. Their team leader in blocks. Yeah, how about that? What else is, What else does he not <laughs> do or can't he, can he do? He does it all, David. He just is all over the floor, has a presence that very few players have that commands a, a presence. Corey Gibson took Sharp out last night when he had two fouls in the first half, but they were up double digits. Keeps him on the floor here with the game tight. That's a better defense. He went straight up and made a very difficult shot for DeMarcus Sharp. Dreyer's pass tipped out of bounds. You mentioned the 18 points in the paint, but maybe a more pivotal stat with Terion Murdoch's hurt and Isaac Mushila and Trevion Tennyson, their other two leading scorers with eight total. Owen Deese with 10 of Corpus's 18 bench points. And to Northwestern State, zero. So that's that's tough. You know, you can't rely on one or two guys to carry you. You've got to have some other guys step up, David, if you want to go, you want to go dancing. Mushila for the lead. Zellan Baba, junior from Israel, picks up the rebound. Well, he played a lot for this program in the past few years, so he's a good player to have. He's a dependable guy uh, for Corey Gibson. He'll give them some solid minutes. He had 20 in a tournament game a couple of years ago. He hasn't played a lot this year, but he's solid. Three from up top, Black. Sharp is now on the bench as we're under two minutes to go first half. Well, I've always said you can make a substitution. You can keep your guys on the bench if the game's closed. It starts getting away from you. You got to get them back on the floor, but they're going to try to give them a rest, not have them pick up additional fouls. Under five to shoot. And Haney gets bunched by Fryer to bail the Demons out. Well, both of these teams, David, really foul at a high pace. I think both teams average almost 20 fouls, in, you know, putting teams in the line 20 plus times, 20 fouls a game. So these are two aggressive teams. They're going to foul, they're going to bump you, uh, they're going to play aggressively. And the officials, I think, to their credit, have let these guys go. And I think officials try to do that in, in tournament time. I think they let the players determine the game. Fryer, second foul, so Deese checks right back in. Under 10 of the shot clock. Haney from the wing. Corpus basketball. Much better defensive stand by the Islanders. They're finding a way now to slow down. We said you're not going to stop Northwestern State, but they're slowing them down. They're making their scores, their, their looks a little bit more difficult. Deese's career high is 13. He's three off that. This is a 14-2 Corpus run. Mushila makes the catch and a chance to give his team the lead at the free throw line. Isaac Mushila, born in Lubumbashi in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where his mom, Marie Bamba, still lives. And she is watching this game right now from halfway around the world. She's able to watch her games on her laptop, and these are pictures of her doing so earlier in the season. Eight-hour time difference, Coach, between the Congo and the Central Time Zone here in the U.S. Or a game today started at midnight there. I think it's wonderful that she gets to watch her son play from so far. Well, away. what a treat! But I can guarantee you, she's not going to miss this game. This is <laughs> this is too big. But how special is that for his mom to be able to see this game? And, you know, basketball now an international game and uh, a huge game, maybe the biggest game of his career. One of two for Mushila, but the Islanders have made up a 16-point deficit. At the 9.46 mark, we're tied at 31.
Haney pushed off. Well, David, that had to be obvious because you called it before the officials did. <laughs> so you, you had to have that right. And, but you're 100% right. And, and the officials didn't have a hard time with that one. You can see the pesky Islanders now playing some defense, moving their feet. And it was Haney with the push up. Great call. David, the momentum that the Islanders are, have right now is really significant in this game. You know, it's going to be a close game either way at halftime. But I think the Islanders can feel good about coming back in the absence of Murdoch's. Jasper Corpus to take the final shot of the half. Under 10 seconds. Jackson finds Ross Williams from the corner. Deese didn't see the clock, and that shot wouldn't have counted. All Northwestern State early, all Texas A&M, Corpus Christi late. Well, you know, the big start and the big finish. I love it. Things are as they should be. It's all tied up. What a game. You know, your bench comes up with 18 points in the absence of one of your inspired leaders and scorers. Uh, that's getting the job done. That's just doing what your team needs you to do. So Steve Lutz has a basketball team. They, they won the conference. They're champions for a reason. They went to the NCAA last year. Uh, no fluke there. Uh, this is a championship caliber program. Trip to the NCAA tournament on the line. DeMarcus Sharp with the basketball, 16 of the Demons, 31 points in the first half. Under 10 of the shot clock. Sharp with the ball again. Fires over Trevion Tennyson. And Simeon Fryer in for the injured Murdochs with the rebound. Well, Northwestern State on their heels a little bit offensively. I, I think I think the Islanders have them playing a little bit, uh, a little more tentatively. That's a pretty good defense. That's how they've gotten back specifically and technically. They play great defense. Ansel Emanuel, part of the Demon Five to start the second half. Alley Youth out of the reach of Fryer and Emanuel with the basketball just with one arm. His left arm amputated at the age of six after a climbing accident. One of the most inspirational stories in college basketball. Well, that was an interesting lob. Uh, that was an interesting call. That that play was there, just a little bit off center. You see this. Look at the the look to the basket, and he, there was nobody at home here. It's just if you throw that, you know, in, in a position where he catches it, that's a pretty big play. But again, the key to this half, David, is going to be defensively. I think both teams very good offensively. But who's going to get stops? Fryer comes out with three fouls, and Owen Deese replaces him. The freshman with ten in the first half. And that's an offensive foul on Demarcus Sharp. His third foul early in the second. No, and he didn't argue it. He knew right away that he committed the foul. Uh, he's got to be really careful because he commits a fourth. That's going to be a big story in this game. Corey Gibson leaves him in. Yeah, and you, this is championship time. You you can't pull him out of the game this this early. You've got to allow and trust your player to play. A&M Corpus Christi has not led. Tough feed for Mishila, but it's the Demons. And knock it out of bounds. Six on the shot clock. David, be really interesting to see if you're the Islanders. Do you go at DeMarcus Sharp? Of course, you can't go at him when he's on the bench. <laughs> he, goes, he goes to the bench. I think it's good to, to give him a minute or two here because, you know, you just get involved in a charge or something in this half. Now you got four. Uh, that's too big a loss Jalen Jackson that won't count offensive foul Well, I like the call I thought the offense did initiate the officials, you know letting these players play But they're calling the obvious you have to call advantage disadvantage when an offensive player uses his offhand or create space to, to create a shot That's a foul the officials again a veteran crew doing an excellent job Just the third purpose Christie turnover and you remain tied at 31. Under 10 of the shot clock. Jelante Black, 123s on the year. Once one more. And Deese continues his solid play. Great defense. They're having to go deep on the clock. They're not used to doing that. 
The Lazarus Keys, yes, Islanders lead for the first time today. Well, they've had the momentum, David. They didn't waste any time. They've come out of the locker room, and they've continued with this momentum. Their bench up, and they are excited. It's causing Corey Gibson to call a, a really well-timed timeout. That's a must-call. Demons off the scoreboard since the break. DeLazarus Keys and the Islanders looking for back-to-back -back NCAA tournament. He broke his foot two and a lot of four-year schools shot away from him afterwards. Two injuries for DeMarcus Sharp at Missouri State. Gibson brings him over to Natchitoches and he's back on the floor with three fouls hoping to break a scoring drill. Well, he loves his coach, but I can tell you his coach loves him. They've got a great relationship, but it's all about trust, David. You want to you want to get the most of your players. You got to earn, give and earn trust. Good feed inside, and Hampton off the Dane Prim assist ties things up. Well, I love that coming out of the timeout. That's a big-time score by Northwestern State. Three Ds. He's tied his career high early in the second half. David, these players are saving their best for this championship game. And, you know, how important is it to play your best because the winner goes on, the loser has to go home. The beauty of these tournaments must win to get into the NCAAs. Prim, Michelle the rebound. Dees feeling it. Keys call for the foul. Yeah, you know it's it, David. It, this has just been a remarkable comeback. Uh, not that you don't think that the Islanders have it in it, but they've come back a lot quicker than I thought they would. Well, here's the here's the opportunity, you know, when you're playing with confidence and you know, he's wide open He's gonna knock that shot down. It, it, it just a little bit of a miscommunication on that possession Coach Northwestern State led 26 10 midway through the first half just seven points since in almost 13 minutes Under 10 of the shot clock Prim Two straight misses. Yeah, they're trying to go up inside it to on the Islanders. The Islanders are playing big inside. With both Prim and Hampton on the floor. Mushila for three. Black with the rebound. Hampton, good first step to the rim and scores. Freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Well, I like the fight in Northwestern State. They're, there's a, they're playing against a very hot, and very inspired Islander team, but they're not backing down. Jackson is fires, and with DeMarcus Sharp scoreless this half after 16 in the first, teammates keeping his team within one. That's off Jackson, still Northwestern State ball. DeMarcus Sharp and Northwestern State hoping for their first ticket to the big dance and tip his career high numbers and boy They've needed that 21 points off the bench and he's got a, a, a helper half of them. He's made big shot after big shot He's delivered for his team under pressure Any more playing time as the season's gone along but this one of his best games of the season tying his career high Bench points, 21-0 Corpus, but Demarcus Sharp has just put the Demons in front with his first two of the half, and now Northwestern State will get the ball back. David, Northwestern State's been really good out of timeouts. They've scored a couple of times now directly after a timeout. That's, you know, that's coaching. <laughs> that's knowing your team and putting them in position to be successful. They've got to do everything they can to slow down this Islander team, and they've done that uh, coming out of the timeout. Hansel Emanuel back on the floor for the Demons. Sharp. Jalen Jackson will cover Sharp most of the game. Steve Lutz told us when he scored 40, as a Michilis goal for a double dribble. When Sharp had 40 two weeks ago in the loss at Corpus, Steve Lutz said Jackson actually did a good job on him, wearing him down as the game went along. We'll see what happens well, today. Well, he did a good job in that last possession. They isolated Sharp in the, in the high post with no help. There's no help in the high post. Everybody's one pass away, and he got to the rim, but, uh, but he was defended really strongly. Now Tennyson tries to cover Sharp. Deese with the tip. Haney picks up the basketball. Black for three. Got it. Come on to Black, David. He's huge. Boy, those are some big shots off the turnover.
Demons have responded since they've been down for the first time today. Seven straight points. Jackson answers. Now, not to be outdone, how about the drive and the finish off the glass by Jalen Jackson? No fear, David. These teams have no fear. They're going at each other. There's the high post isolate. Keys anticipates the pass, saves it. Emmanuel picks it up. Able to feed Haney cross court. Deese. Emmanuel got the block. David, I thought that was two points for sure. And Emmanuel goes up and rejects him at the rim. Sharp. Tennis in the reverse, tied up. Nice looking move, David. This game's got championship written all over it. The player's playing at an awfully high level. And again, I just keep saying it. Whichever team can manage a few consecutive stops just to, just to slow down the other team will put themselves in position to, to separate. Sharp tries again. Hampton got the board. Getting physical, now a whistle. Well, David, how, how about how about the what I thought was a dunk? I just kind of I counted it. I just chalked it up as two. Watch in transition here. You can see. Uh, I mean, you, you can just see what you thought was a, was a was a dunk, and he blocked it going down into the into the cylinder. That's just amazing timing. He's been insistent on not receiving any special treatment. If you read numerous articles about him, every one of his teammates rave about his work ethic. And look at him contributing in the biggest game of the year. Talk about contributing. It's a career high now for Deese with 16. And talk about raving. <laughs> you could have to rave about his performance. David, big time players say performances for big time games. Sharp feeds Hampton. Yes, as he gets pumped to the floor. Jackson lost it going up. For the lead. Foul on the three-point attempt. David, I mean, look at what these players are doing on the biggest stage conference championship week. He's just has ice water in his veins. You give him an opening and he knows what to do. It's easy to hit those shots when nothing's on the line. David, this is pressure. Those shots don't go down. You let your opponents separate, but these teams aren't giving an inch. It's just, you can see this is championship caliber effort. There was Deese with a foul on Black with three free throws. It's a three-year starter at Missouri State. Averaged nine points a game last season. He got the season off strong. 25 points in Northwestern State's first ever regular season win over a top 25 opponent. When they went from Natchitoches to Fort Worth and knocked off TCU November 14th. Uh, that win is looking bigger and bigger. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I've covered TCU. I've known, uh, you know, their coach a long time. And that's one of the best teams he's ever had. And to go in and win at TCU... Very few teams have done that, but Northwestern State accomplished it. Black had seven threes that night, three so far today. Well, I asked Jamie Dixon about Northwestern State. He said, look, they beat us. You know, I, was it our best performance? No, but they had something to do with it. They earned that victory, so give Northwestern State credit. They played on the big stage, and they've, and, and they've come through. Ross Williams, Corpus back in front. And that's what Corpus does, David. They've got the inside game, so what do they do? They establish the block. You must go down and get help because they can punish you there. They kick it out. Now they've got they've got some good-looking threes. Great balance on the floor by the Islanders. Top two seeds in the league. Back and forth now in the second half. Tennyson covers Sharp with Jackson on the bench. Under five on the shot clock. Sharp. Well, he was double teamed on that, David. He got by one defender. There was a second. So if you're the Islanders, you're not giving him any easy free looks. He's missed his last five. 
Keys. Yes. Uh, he's done a great job again of establishing the block. I keep talking about their presence inside. That's a weapon that the Islanders have. They can beat you at the rim and they can get to the foul line. Lazarus Keys, first double double of the season yesterday. Four key points this half. Haney for three answers. We're tied up. And don't go anywhere. <laughs> Haney decides, look, you want to make a little run? I'm going to make a run of our own. Ice water in his vein. Get to the foul line. You've done it all year long. Don't stop now. If you're Corey Gibson, look, you're being, you got to be ready. DeMarcus is being double teamed. Somebody else has got to step up. Just be ready for your time. You will get some open looks. Knock him down. DeMarcus Sharp does have 18, but Isaac Haney, Jamonte Black, and Jalen Hampton starting to step up 30 combined points. Those are the only four players to score for Northwestern State today. Jalen Jackson back on the floor. Under five on the shot clock. Jackson from way downtown. Tennyson, Corpus back up. Huge, huge second effort, second chance point for the Islanders. I thought Northwestern State played outstanding defense, but they didn't seal the deal, David. You've got a defensive rebound. Isaac Mishila, best offensive rebounder in the league coming in. Sharp gets to the rim, scores. Well, how did he beat two defenders and then a third at the rim? That's just a great individual play. Remember, he got his third foul early this half. Has not picked up a foul since. Emmanuel one arms the rebound off the tennis and miss. Well, he's playing some significant minutes. Don't think he's not important to his squad. What inspiration he's giving his team, making huge plays. Doesn't get any better than this. Must win in these leagues to get into the NCAA tournament. Emmanuel begins to dribble and gets fouled. Deese reaches in. Well, think about this, David. You've got one arm, so you don't have a left arm. People even force you to your left. That's fair. If you're going to be out there. You're going to have to play that way. He still finds a way with one arm to make plays for his team. It, you can't say enough about the effort he's, he's playing in. But, again, he doesn't want you to, to look at him as any type of special player. He's just out there to help his team. This is your first time seeing him. His left arm amputated at age six after a climbing accident. This is his fifth straight start. And getting crunch minutes here, nine minutes to go in a tie game. Now, there's no story like this anywhere in college basketball, David. You're seeing something special. Sharp fades away. Halfway down. Well, I thought it was going to say that, that would have been special. That's a good look for DeMarcus. Emmanuel got the tip. Jackson saves. Gets to the rim and scores. And that's what he does. David, he's very quick to the basket. The senior at 5'11", just extreme quickness and strength. Yeah, Jalen Jackson's really hounding DeMarcus. Shot clock winding down. Sharp might have gotten away with a push scores Jackson one of the whistle didn't get it Well, there was a push but the officials I think doing a pretty good job You know letting the players decide this game not enough to cause a foul new Sheila for three got it 39% from beyond the yard coming in his biggest three of the season so far well, He gets the line 200 times and if you don't like him down there He'll step out and drain a three like it was nothing David these teams are hungry under eight to go Sharp now posting up. Finds Hampton. Deese saves it to Mishila. Jackson up and under. Gets the roll. Well, there might have been a push up there. Officials say play on. They do, and he makes a unbelievable degree of difficulty finish. Both teams really playing at a high level. Foul. Tennyson reaches in. <laughs> back and forth we go, but Corpus five-point lead looking for back-to-back -back conference tournament crowns. 
Eye Center, host of the 2023 Southwood Conference Tournament. We are seeing a tremendous title game between the top two teams in the league. Texas A&M Corpus Christi down 16 midway through the first half, now up five. Well, David, it's just, yeah, it's incredible that bench scoring 27-0. It's just, uh, that's unbelievable. Owen Deese, a career high 16 to pace the Islanders off the bench. DeMarcus Sharp, two more, had 40 in the last meeting against the Islanders in a loss, now up to 24. And there's Northwestern State, once again, scoring out of a timeout. What do you do, David? You put the ball in your best player's hands in the middle of the floor because they will double-team if they can. They will try to double-team DeMarcus Sharp, but you cannot double. You really cannot double in the middle of the floor. He gets in the lane. You double there. He's going to dump down for an easy basket or fan it to the side for an easy three. Sharp had 31 yesterday, had 32 against the Sun Belt regular season champ Southern Miss, including a buzzer beater. Ross Williams trains the three, his second of the half. Uh, he's not shy. And he's on his mark, too. These players, again, playing with urgency. Biggest corpus lead with six and a half to go. Hand to get the lane in the flush. <laughs> you know, he'll get credit for the dunk. What about to Marcus Sharp off the rhythm dribble? He hits one dribble like he's going to take you and throws a one-handed pass, zips it in for an easy, easy dunk. Double-double for the freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Jackson, hang, scores! Hot second half continues for the senior from San Antonio. I love what Jalen Jackson has done. He is, I said it before, he's fearless. He's not afraid to go into the land of the Giants, and he's strong. He can get his shot off in traffic. 68% for the Islanders since halftime. Sharp misses this time. Greedy Williams comes away with the board. Three from the wing off the mark by Black. That shot might have been a little quick, but you know when you're feeling it, David, you got to trust your players, and and both teams have been on their mark, so uh, you can't doubt your players at this point of the season. You've got to let them play. Corpus has made his last five shots with the ball up six. When you got the ball in your hands, you're going to make sure you get the shot you want. Here comes Jackson again. Fades. Key's offensive rebound. Oh, and he knocks Greedy Williams to the floor. They play on. Tennyson scores! Well, yeah, the officials now are going to review something. But, David, I said before that they were going to let... Besides UCLA or Arizona can win it? Well, I think USC's had a great year. Uh, I, I like what, they, what they've done. Uh, they can certainly... Uh, play with the big boys. They've had a great year. You know, I, I don't go to sleep on Andy Enfield's team. Boogie Ellis has really stepped up this play. Championship game Saturday night. You know, and I, I think, you know, the Pack's got probably three teams that are for sure in, maybe a fourth, but, but you know, you, you just, at, at that stage of the season, uh, the only real locks, in my opinion, Arizona, UCLA, they're playing for seeding. They're not playing to get in the tournament. They'd like to get as high a seed as possible. Joe Lenardi thinks USC looks good, but how many more will they get out of the Pac-12 of Arizona State? One of the first four teams out, according to Joe Lenardi. Well, they've had a good year. I mean, Bobby Hurley's team has really, uh, they've stepped up. He's turned things around this year, but it's been a competitive league, that's for sure. Uh, we'll see what happens in, in, in that neck of the woods on the West Coast. Sharps free throws, cut the deficit to six. David, if you are the Islanders now, you've got a, a I won't say comfortable, but a little breathing room. You've got a two-possession lead here. You don't want to turn it over. You've had some success going inside to create some outside looks, but you're going to have to play against a Northwestern State team who's now extending into a 1-3-1 full-court trap. Simeon Fryer drives. Lost it going up. Prim takes it away. Sharp to the rim, two more, up to 28. Again, out of the timeout. Corey Gibson, the 1-3-1, one, one, paying dividends. Four in a row to cut of the four. Sharp intercepts the pass. Haney for three. 
Would have cut it to one. Well, that's a rare miss for the sharpshooter. That's usually bottoms. Haney got the tip and a dive on the floor. Northwestern State ball. How about the hustle? Of Haney. This plains Missouri showing you how tough he is. Out of the eight Corpus Christi turnovers this half, three coming in the last 108. Yeah, you got to make plays like that if you want to win a championship. You know, the other teams are, are just too good. You've got to get as many extra possessions as you can. DeMarcus Sharp, they're letting him play. No whistle. Feeds Williams inside. Deficit down to two. And that's how dangerous DeMarcus Sharp is. He gets by people. You put a second defender there, sometimes a third, and he has the presence of mind to find his teammates. Mushila gets to the rim, gets fouled. Well, that's a man's game down there, David, and that's where Isaac Mushila, and I mean that in, the, in the, the kindest way. He plays bully ball. He gets the ball inside. He will make you foul him. He's going to come away, basket or a foul. So many players get down there. They don't like the contact. They'll get up a quick shot. They won't absorb contact. He, and you can tell by the band-aids and, and the bandages, he's been in battle. He's not afraid of this. Well, the bandage coming yesterday, he has three stitches over that left eye. And his head coach, Steve Lutz, tells us he's had to take a better job taking care of his body this season because at his size, he's listed at 6'5". He does get beat up quite a bit down low. No, he's not 6'5 or 6'6". I know what a 6'5, 6'6 <laughs> post guy looks. I had a Marcus Kennedy. We listed at 6'7". He might have been 6'5 when we went to the Sweet 16 with him uh, back in Eastern Michigan. But, you know, I, I can tell you this. He also, Isaac Mishila, he's been to the line almost 200 times this year, David. That shows you how tough he is. And he's 84% from the stripe coming in. Corpus as a team, top five in the nation in free throw shooting. Every time Northwestern State closes the gap, it's the Islanders that just say, not yet. They're trying to write the final chapter. Sharp got the step. Black from the corner. Outlet to Tennyson. Lays it in. Beautiful feed from Jackson. A great transition basket by the Islanders. You, they make you pay if you don't get back on defense. Sharp for three. Jackson challenges Sharp. Foul call, Sharps fourth. David, what do you do when you your opponents miss a shot? You run to the rim, you keep your head up, and you try to beat your opponents down the floor. Great transition basketball. Jalen Jackson. Six assists, 12 points, and at the line. Getting more playing time today because their spiritual leader, Terry on Murdix, helped off the floor in the game's first couple of minutes. He and his teammates have stepped up in Murdix's absence. You weren't sure, David, and you're never sure what a team's going to do when they're down, their leader, their score, you know, goes out with an injury. You just don't know how you're going to respond, but if you've got championship caliber and DNA, you kind of get a feeling, and that's what the Islanders have done in his absence. They've really, and Jalen Jackson particularly, has stepped up and delivered. First recruit, Steve Lutz, brought into Corpus, transfer from North Texas. Lutz played with Jackson's father at Texas Lutheran in Seguin, Texas. Biggest lead for the Islanders, two and a half to go. By the way, that doesn't hurt either. You want to make sure you keep the family. <laughs> Haney for three. Foul. And I believe that'll be on Corpus going after the rebound. That's great hustle by Northwestern State. They missed the shot, but they're not they're not playing. Uh, they're, if I don't play every shot like it's a miss, they are getting every opportunity to get offensive rebounds. They need as many possessions, put back, second chances as they can. Because Islanders now are playing great defense. 
Haney in black. Elkerson State's best two three-point shooters hit their first four from beyond the arc, but two of 11 since. Now Jalen Hampton to the line for the Demons. Well, you're DeMarcus. I mean, DeMarcus Sharp's got four fouls. If you're the Islanders, it would not be a bad idea to go right at him and see if you can get him because he's a pain in your side. Get him out of the game. And, and because you don't want to give Northwestern State and DeMarcus Sharp a chance to beat you. So don't be surprised if Steve Lutz and his staff call a number particularly Jalen Jackson to go right at DeMarcus Sharp. Lutz, former assistant at Purdue, Creighton, and Texas schools, SMU, Stephen F. Austin, incarnate word from San Antonio, idolized the Iceman, George Gervin growing up, hoping to see his team go to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament appearances. Well, you got Sharp guarding Nishila, that's interesting matchup. Very interesting. Surprised if they don't go inside to Nishila. Nishila now looking to post up, but Jackson drives instead. Two more. Maybe the biggest half of his life. Looking to get the Islanders to the NCAA's. Sharp responds. And Jalen Jackson not taking a back seat to anybody in this game. They've needed him, and he has just delivered for his team to go to the dance. And we wouldn't have had a chance to play, too. We wouldn't have had a chance to play this week 16. So how big is it? It's, it means everything. You must win your conference tournament. No moral victories. 70% shooting for the Islanders since halftime when we were tied, but they're still just up six, under 90 seconds to go. And here's the aggression, David. That's smart timeout, by the way. Jalen Jackson didn't like what he saw. Uh, you know, Steve, Steve Lutz is okay, okay, I got you, but that's a heady play. So many players will panic, cough the ball up, and now it's a one possession for Gonzaga. They've got seniors, they've got leadership, uh, and they've got, again, championship DNA. They've been to a Final Four, uh, so you've got you to really be wary of, of, the, of, of, the, of the Zags. How about Amir Abdur Rahim? First season as head coach at Kennesaw State, they won one game. Now the Owls are on their way to the big dance, winning the game. Son, turnover. Black stripped it away and open for three. They drop again. They can review this. From my vantage point, I thought it hit Fryer's hand first, but Ross Collins calls it Corpus Ball. David, you've been right before, and I'm going to go on the limb to say I think you're right again. Three. I absolutely don't believe you need a three. You'll take it if they give it to you, but you would love to stop the clock again, get to the foul line, or get a two. And my guess is DeMarcus Sharp will have something to say about this. Steve Lutz takes Mashila out, brings in the Lazarus Keys for more size. Under a minute to go. Sharp cuts it to one. And there's the two-pointer that we talked about. You don't have to panic and take a three. It's a one-point game. Again, the trap. Whistle blows and a foul call. Oh, they just got it across, too. Remember, they had two to give. That's the fifth team foul on the Demons. Well, and you're reminding your team that, David, in the huddle. You're saying, guys, they're going to foul us because they can. <laughs> They've got fouls to give. You must be strong with the basketball. They gave up one turnover. They cannot give it up again. You've got the lead still. You've got to make Northwestern come all the way back in this game. Don't give it up to a turnover. Steve Lutz's team led 72-64, 40 seconds ago. Well, again, I like the odds of going inside against a smaller Northwestern State team. Let's see what happens, but play the percentages. If you have to get to the free throw line, you'll take free throws. Under five on the shot clock. Jackson finds Mushila to Keys. Second chance. Shot clock is off. Tennyson shoots it anyway and scores. Well, he must not have heard you, David. And Steve Lutz is jumping up and down. But his team, his team, you know, kind of lost track of the shot like they did. Well, yeah, I think you still try to get the best basket. Your best odds are you're not going to get fouled. So if you can get a quick two, if you don't, or you can get a kick out three, you'll take it.
122 threes for Jamonte Black. Do they look for him here? Clock winding down. Black off balance. Nishila with the rebound. Yeah, they, they decided to kind of look for a three. And again, I'm not going to second guess anything that Northwestern State does. They, they, they're, they've been playing an excellent game. Come back when the Islanders made their search. So this has been a championship level game. And Northwestern State has played championship caliber basketball. Islanders 79% from the line as a team. Trevion Tennyson 91%, but will throw the inbounds. Well, I, Jackson going to the line coach. Yeah, I like that they had some floor space there. If you get in trouble, you don't want to turn it over near your own basket. Uh, but again, they're up three, so the odds are with you. You just you just don't want to get a five second call. Get it in, you'll take your chances. And now a free throw should pretty much give the Islanders some breathing room. He's just 69% from the line coming in and two for four today, but he's been the best player for Corpus this half. 12 of his 16 coming since the break. He makes this first one on the front end. It'll be a two possession game. Well, you miss, then you got to ask yourself if you're the Islanders, do you foul? Right. The answer is you can, and you probably put yourself in a position to make sure that they don't tie it up. That's the big one. Well, that's huge. Now again, you just don't want the clock to stop. You've got to back up. You're going to, you you know, Steve Lutz telling his team, do not foul, do not even get near a Northwestern State basketball player. Let them go the length of the floor. Let him shoot a three. Let him shoot a two. Don't foul. Clock winding down. Sharp. Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances for the first time ever. 75-71, the Islanders defeat Northwestern State.